Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog. How is your day going? I, I hope it's amazing. I tell you what, today is uh, the day that I've been dreaming about since the beginning of the build. And I know I've said that a little bit, but this is really truly the case. I've said this a million times that this is the centerpiece. It's the crown jewel. When you walk into the Reptarium, whether it's over there or through here, whatever it is, this is the enclosure that is blowing people away and going to continue to blow people away. And of course, that's Ivy the Green Anaconda's cage. Today is the day that we're gonna actually move Ivy into her new enclosure. Oh my, I cannot wait to see what she does. I don't know, is she gonna be in the water? Is she gonna be on the land? I'm not sure what she's gonna do, but first I'm actually gonna climb in here and just do a little bit of a water change here. Just get some of that cloudiness out. Probably just drop it down four or five inches. Kind of suck some of this debris off the bottom that just comes from the residue from the actual polyurea and then get this thing ready. So let's go ahead, uh, get some swim shorts on, jump in here, do some cleanup, and then we get to move Ivy in. I tell you guys, uh, I don't know what's better than moving a giant anaconda into an even more giant cage. The only way to clean this enclosure is uh, to get in. And uh, the good news is the water's warm because it's so warm in here, but uh, uh, I don't, it's gonna be fun. I think there's some swimming with anaconda opportunities as well. So let's go ahead and get in the water and see what's gonna happen. up you guys ready to get dried off and put ivy in there just have to fill the water up and then we'll actually put ivy in and see what she does it's going to be amazing oh and by the way we use a vinegar based water solution to clean the glass so that it's safe for animals and stuff like that so uh all right looking good uh we'll get this wrapped up and we'll put her in And this is the dream, guys. I mean, I've been thinking about this since, you know, going to the St. Louis Zoo probably 15 years ago and seeing an amazing green anaconda display with them in the water like that. And then recently going to the Dallas World Aquarium and seeing a similar type habitat. And that's kind of where the grain child kind of came from with wanting to have a really heavily aquatic, you know, enclosure that she could potentially crawl around in. So I am beyond excited to see what she's gonna do. Is she gonna be on the land? Is she gonna be in the water? Is she gonna be both? I don't know. So let's just go ahead, let Ivy go, and sit back and admire this situation. Okay, baby girl, here's your new habitat, honey. There you go, sweetheart. And away she goes. Oh my gosh, she looks so good in here. I mean, just looking with the lighting, and, and she looks so big. I mean, again, one of the things I was a little bit concerned about is, you know, Ivy's not a huge anaconda, and this is an absolutely huge cage. She's gonna get huge one day, and she's gonna be able to grow into this, but she actually doesn't look super small. She looks pretty impressive in here. But just look at the colors with the matching. Again, she's gonna crawl onto the land, I don't know if she's gonna stay on the land, eventually go into the water, hang out there. I'm not sure what she's gonna do. This is absolutely insane. I mean, just take, I'm gonna come over here and take a look. Okay, even from over here, you can't see her because she's behind the log a little bit, but if you look this way, unbelievable. Oh my gosh, look at how freaking awesome that is. Again, she spends a lot of her time in the land in this other habitat, but we didn't have a water feature that she could swim around in. So I don't know if she's gonna utilize this or what's gonna happen. So I tell you what guys, uh, I am, it's, it's more than I expected. I mean, this is the dream that I want. We're gonna actually get some foliage, some plants and stuff hanging down so it looks a little more Amazonian in here. But I wanted to just put her in here because I was just too excited not to. I mean, this is it. This is the one thing. I mean, I was looking for so, so much stuff, but this was definitely one of those habitats that I could not wait to see what she was gonna do. And so I, I think I'm just gonna sit back and, and watch her for a while because uh, this is absolutely a moment I wanna relish for a long time. Oh 
my god, guys, she's about to go in the water for the first time. I didn't know she was gonna use it. Look at her, she's just checking it out. Oh my gosh, she's gonna do it. Oh, that is crazy cool. So there it is, actually submerged in the water. This again is the exhibit that I remember seeing at those other facilities where they're in the water like that, where you can see them underneath water. Oh my God, she looks so amazing. And of course the water is gonna clear up a lot over the next couple weeks. This is insane. This is, this is beyond my wildest dreams, how awesome this is. And Ivy is back up on the land. Uh, I t this is amazing. She is all over the place. She's crawled all up all the logs. She's been in the water. Uh, now she's a landaconda, right? Because she's just hanging out on the land. I don't know when she gets settled in and really gets used to the entire enclosure. If she's going to spend more time in the water or more time on land, I have no. Maybe both. I hope she splits it a little bit both, you know, because it's amazing. But right now she's just so mentally stimulating with this absolutely mammoth cage that has the water feature and stuff like that. This is incredible. I love the fact that she seems to be loving her new habitat and uh, I'm glowing inside guys I mean this is amazing I've been dreaming about this for so long uh, I can't believe this actually happened and I have to share it with you guys because this uh, dreams do come true guys it's hard work a lot of hard work but my gosh dreams do come true I gotta run to my favorite store to go get hay I love about this store is you can get cherry salsa, roasted garlic, pasta, and uh, monkey butt all in the same aisle. <laughs> oh my gosh, guys! Come on, come on, guys! I see this. Man. Oh, look at it! Oh my gosh, come here, little chicken chick! Oh, I love it! Thank gosh, Verde doesn't need these anymore because they're so cute. I was so sad that we had to feed these off to Verde. Look at how cute these things are! Oh my gosh! I love this time of year. They're so cute. That's why I love coming to this store. You can always find cool stuff. It's a sap sack holder. A sap sack holder. I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> Back to the shop. Exciting day, all kinds of cool stuff going on. The fish spas that are gonna go right here. I, you know, I'm super excited about this one. We're actually gonna head off to my buddy Steve Bashy at Bashy Aquatics and see what he's got going on. He's been working on putting them together, so hopefully uh, he'll have something to show me. Let's go ahead, hit the road, and go see his pretty awesome place. We made it to Bashy's place. Uh, it's crazy. I mean, this is his fish gallery here, but uh, wow, it's amazing. But we're going in to see my fish spas. This place is awesome. I mean, look at how amazing this is. Just this is all fish stuff, acrylic, got skimmers and life support over here. Uh, and we're alone in this place. I don't know if there's anyone else here. Oh, there's somebody. Look who it is. There he is. No, no, no. It's the man, the Bashi. <laughs> What's up, brother? <laughs> What's up, dude? How are you, man? All right, so uh, you're going to be able to see through them, though, no? No. no, no. <laughs> so these are the fish spas, guys. Uh, Steve just put these together for me, kind of, and it just gives you an idea of what they're going to. Is this the top, then? That's the top. Okay, so this is the top. Okay, oh, it's got the Reptarium. Oh my gosh, look, it's got the Reptarium logo. So essentially what's gonna happen is there'll be a chair back here, a seat back here. The filtration will be on the backside, right? Is that the exactly, idea? Exactly, yeah. Right, or yep. hidden. Yeah, so exactly. that, yeah, so it'll be hidden underneath the seat. Yeah. So essentially this is obviously all acrylic here. Uh, yep, and so the seat will be back here, filtration will be back here, all that type of stuff. Seat is up here. Feet go in here, and uh, and that's the fish spot. So that's pretty cool. So this is how they're looking. They look cool, dude. Thank you, man. This yeah, is no dope, problem, dude. Man. This is awesome. I overbuilt them as usual because it's uh, going. Yeah, they're I, ridiculous. I like it. I'm, you got to overbuild. Got to overbuild. That's sweet, dude.
talk to Steve about the game plan here. I mean, first off, you know, obviously everything's gonna be sanded and smooth. Steve does things next level. I mean, you look around, he's an artist. I mean, it's pretty amazing. So obviously clear here, we've got black bottoms, black top with the Reptarium logos over here. We're gonna actually do a graphic in the back there. And then we decided rather than doing like a canister filter thing, we're actually gonna do a sump in the back that will also have the UV sterilizers on it. Cause obviously you want no bacteria to be getting from person to person. So there'll be UV sterilizers, charcoal, sump pump in the back. These will be relatively close together. The seats will be right up here in the back over here. There'll be a little step up here. So uh, this is gonna look so good. I mean, I, I, I tell you what guys, this is gonna be next level. I'm so excited about it. So hopefully within, you know, about maybe two weeks or something like that, we'll be installing these guys so that we're ready for the grand opening because I really want to have these running when we have the grand opening on the 13th. So uh, looking good, I'm getting out of here and getting back to the shop and getting back to work. We actually see a little egg here from our translucent veil chameleon right here. You can see this little egg. Of course, she's not been in with a male, so these would be infertile. Uh, now, when veil chameleon females lay eggs, uh, it can sometimes be a problem if they don't have a male. They can get denosha or egg bound and could potentially even die. So I'm not gonna mess around too much. I just wanna see if I can find her and see if she's actually laying her clutch. But the thing is, she's obviously so buried in here, I don't even know where she's at. To be honest with you, I don't know where she could possibly be. I mean, she's like literally disappeared. So I think what I'm gonna do is leave her alone because I'm assuming she's buried in the bedding to where I can't even see her. Now, I don't want to disturb her because if she's halfway through laying eggs, uh, again, she could egg bind. So I'm just gonna go ahead, put this plant back in here, leave it alone, come back later and see if I can find her and see, hopefully she will have laid her whole clutch. Now that tells me we can get her in with Raul and she'll lay another clutch that hopefully will be fertile and maybe we'll get some baby veils. That would be absolutely incredible. But for now, she's probably buried in the bedding here, hopefully laying eggs. I'm just gonna leave her alone. Excited to get this in. This is actually our massage table for the snake massage room. And uh, I'm gonna just put this together, see how it fits in there. That'll give us an idea of really what kind of movement we can do in there. And then I'll even explain, cause some people have said, what is a snake massage? So I'll kind of explain that. Uh, but for now, let's just go ahead, put this together and see how it fits in there. So the snake massage room, uh, to explain, these are gonna be the snakes, probably mid-sized boas, you know, five to six foot. We have some over at BHP gonna come over here. And then these are gonna be smaller snakes like ball pythons and corn snakes. Basically what happens is you lay down face first. You got the little thing here. And of course we'll have clean linen on each one, right? You lay down there, uh, we take the boas out, about three of them, and you let them crawl all over your back, you know? So you do this back and you're all over the self like that. After a while, you turn over face up on your back and you have the snakes crawl all over your chest and all over your body and stuff like that. These are those kind of mid-sized boas, you know, maybe 12, 15 pounds, something like that. You just feel the undulation and kind of that snake massage thing, right? And then this is the kicker. We put those big snakes back, then you lay on your back face up. We take out the small snakes and we let them crawl on your face and neck and all that type of stuff. So that is a snake massage. We'll show you more as we get going. But now that we have the massage table, uh, it's kind of officially the snake massage room. Ivy is looking amazing. She was all over this whole enclosure. Now she's just hanging out in the back. I don't know what's gonna happen, but uh, I, I am blown away about how awesome this is. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope that you're continuing to enjoy the expansion. Remember, March 13th is the weekend that we open up. It's gonna be absolutely amazing. Cannot wait to share that with everyone that comes to visit. You guys may know that I started a podcast channel. It's called Checking In. You can actually subscribe to that right here. Over here, you can run through a whole playlist of a bunch of cool stuff. Subscribe to the vlog channel on this one. Turn those post notifications on. Have an absolutely wonderful day. Be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.